sometimes when I'm drawing a face, it'll have a certain cast to it that'll lead to words in the narrative, and then I'll letter in all the words of the narrative, and then I'll come in to finish the rendering in ink, and I'll add that much more gloom because I'm bouncing back off the narrative. And that's what I want the reader's mind to do, really, is to, is to see the words over here and the pictures over here and turn them into an amalgam. All I did with Batman was remember what it felt, what it felt like when I was six years old. And I, I was in a, in a department store and came across a 25-page a, a giant of Batman. The buildings were all gigantic, and the, and the lead character looked like a bad guy. When I got the chance to do Batman, I wanted to do to adults what that comic did to me. And uh, they gave me tremendous freedom with Batman, because, because really, they, Batman was selling so badly that uh, they had nothing to lose. And I created The Dark Knight Returns, which is meant as a really Wagnerian novel about an overage Batman. I made him as old as his legend. He was 55 years old. Um, and I sort of set about trying to make sense of it in a way an adult would understand. I always felt that Batman, of all the superheroes, was the darkest, was the scariest. And so I wanted him to inhabit a world that justified his existence. Well, I looked around, and it wasn't hard to come up with one. And so I brought in the street gangs, the psychos, the, uh, just the unraveling of, of society that's going on around us. You know, good and bad, you know, that's not even really the issue. It's the artist, you know, trying to portray their own personal vision or message. And, you know, they're not, you know, trying to, you know, use these, like, ideological things like good and bad. You know, it's more, it's more complex. And Heidi... Is it more complex, or are they simply fudging over the difficult uh, mm. choice about making between good and evil? No, I think that there's, again, it comes from what the artist's intention is. You know, I mean, I think a cartoonist is, is an artist in his or her own right. And uh, a lot of, I mean, what, what appears in Youngblood is a reflection of Rob Liefeld and what his concerns are. I mean, believe it or not, if it's fight scenes, that may be his concern. That may be what he wants to see. He wants to entertain. Um, you know, somebody like uh, Frank Muller, I mean, he has a different set of concerns. I mean, his work is much more ambiguous. Uh, Watchmen is one of the classics of the genre, and that's a very complex and ambiguous work. I mean, it, to me, it, it, it's, it's a medium. It's a medium and an art form that's capable of any level of expression. <laughs> About this whole pageant of superheroes, which were the most interesting and, and the most provocative from a critic's perspective? Well, uh, I think the X-Men were the ones who really personified. I mean, every era has had its own superhero, but I mean, Superman represented, I think, a very youthful innocence, as, as you've said. You know, Batman is certainly a real icon. I mean, he's a dark Avenger of the night. You know, the X-Men really spoke in the 70s and 80s, the misfits and outcasts. Um, you know, people, human beings love fantasy, and they need heroes, and they need fantastic heroes, and superheroes are an outgrowth of that. I think fantasy at its best feels more real than reality. I think fantasy at its best um, shines a kind of an arc light on things and gets rid of all the unnecessary details and breaks things down to basic contests and conflicts between forces, between emotions. <laughs> And you created X-Force? Mm -hmm. So what is the drawing on? This is the Spike Man. And what's this right here? This is the camera on top of your head that will record the wrongdoings of others. So Rob, have you had any formal art training? No. Just uh, a lot of imagination, I think. Wait, so, so I say it and then look down? Or just open it and say it? Fly button? I think the ability to change uh, our environment and use, like, Superpowers. I always wanted to stretch like Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. I always wanted to be Mr. Fantastic because I, I wanted to be laying on my bed and be able to stretch into the kitchen and get that drink and bring it back because it was almost out of like laziness. Or I wanted to be like the Hulk and when I was mad, beat up anybody who got in my way. People don't sit down and talk about their feelings in fantasy. It's a very good thing to do from time to time in reality, but in a fantasy, it's completely out of place. That's not how things are expressed. A unique aspect of comic books um, that actually, you know, 
it's, it's, it's a method of telling a story. It's the whole thing of a sequence of panels is almost like a sequence of shots in a film. And, you know, and it can be very cinematic. And, you know, the way, you know, there, there's a sequence in One Issue of Love and Rockets where um, it went from, like, a shot of her face. She's in, she's taking a bath. And then, then the next panel is all black. And then the next panel is the face again. She's sleeping, but now there's, like, a foot on her head because someone, while she was sleeping in the bath, was trying to drown her. Comics involve people very deeply who read them, much as novels do. There's no, they, uh, it's a very intimate form in a lot of ways. Uh, the reader does so much of the work of the storytelling themselves that they become involved in these two-dimensional, very brief images um, and bring to them a terrific amount of, of content and emotion. It's almost like the art of not being there in a lot of ways because it's the reader that turns a few dashes into a face and gives it emotion. And it's the reader that fills in the white gutters between each individual panel and gives it a narrative flow. You can do things on a page in a comic book that you can't do in a movie. You get a cut from frame to frame in a movie. In a comic book, one frame can go to the other. Something you, you start out at the top of the page relates to something at the bottom of the page. Or one whole page can be a story in and of itself. I think comic books are just a reflection on society. And if you want to make comic books less violent, then you have to make society less violent first. There's something about violence that I do enjoy. I come from Christian belief. In, uh, both my, my grandfather and my father were um, ministers. And my first heroes were the biblical heroes. <clears throat> I was a huge, I mean, the Bible, I, I would buy the Bible in every form. I had more illustrated versions of the Bible because I loved Samson and I loved Joshua and Gideon and David and Saul and um, um, I mean I just and then these people fought huge wars and there was exchanges of violence I think all I mean to me I go well because some, some some Christian factions come at me and go your books are too too violent and I would give me a break you know I mean Samson slew the Philistines 50 of them with the job of an, of an ass that's exciting to a teenager wow pick up a bone and kill all these guys. It's just what society is interested in right now, violence. And like, there was a time before in the 50s where everything was nice, everyone was happy. Uh, they had those mothers that did everything for you, uh, the beaver and all that stuff. Uh, that's not like now. If you show the beaver right now, no one will watch it. There's stories where the violence is just plain fun. There are fantasies where you have taken a conflict between good and evil, and it will be resolved violently. This does not teach some little lesson to little Timmy that he ought to go beat up little Susie. It doesn't work that way. That's a big damn lie that they're getting away with. At Marvel, when I wanted to do, if I wanted to do stuff, I'd have to fit it into a 22-page frame framework, sometimes less, some very rarely more than 22 pages. But now my own comic company, hey, if I want to fight to go on for 60 pages, I'm calling the shots. I can do that. So I think I was just enamored with, I'm going to exploit this. I'm going to have huge action adventure, and I'm going to have it build to these double-page shots and these triple-page pull-out shots. And it's like, once you've done it, it's like, I, to go back to that, it's just, I don't want to repeat myself. We've got an attorney general right now who's, you know, got her undies in a bundle about violence on TV. You know, once she gets a look at some of the comic books that are out right now, we're going to be back where we were with the Senate hearings in the 1950s, and they're going to try to impose a censorship on the comics the way they are on the television the way they already have on movies people don't want to blame you know the lack of uh, primary education for the violence on the street they'd rather point to a tv show and say they saw bang bang on tv so they're doing it in the streets you know it's easier to uh to slap a label on a, a tv show than it is to uh you know upgrade the education of elementary school kids i guess is this upgrading the education this well, it's got their noses in a book. They're reading words, you know. <laughs>